أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما نافعا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the Reflections on the Risale-i Nur by Bedüzzaman Said Nursi podcast series This is Mustafa Tuna You can listen to the episodes of this series wherever you listen to your podcasts or at the website www.reflections-rn.org In this episode, inshallah, we will continue reading the 15th word. The 15th word, as we repeated a few times by now, is about the verse Bismillahirrahmanirrahim وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَّ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنِيَا بِمَصَابِيحَا وَجَعَلْنَاهَا رُجُومًا لِلشَّيَاطِينَ We have adorned the lowest heaven with lamps and made them missiles for stoning satans. This is from the Quran, chapter 67, verse 5. Following this verse, Ustad Nursi explains the purpose of the uh, treatise as follows. O oh, you the schooled gentlemen. The word uh, used for uh, school here is um, mektab which in the context that Ustad Nursi was writing in the early 20th century would have meant a secularized school as opposed to a religious school. So all the gentlemen who attends um, goes through the system of public education that is predominantly secularized almost anywhere around the world today. So all of us, let's listen. Oh, you, the school gentlemen, whose mind is narrowed down by the spiritless matters of astronomy, intellect has descended to his eye, and who cannot fit the tremendous secret of this verse in his narrow mind. The firmament of this verse can be climbed with a ladder with seven steps. Come, we will climb, climb together. And then we uh, read the first five steps, and inshallah in this episode we will continue with the sixth. As a reminder, a rough translation of the text we will be studying is posted at the website that was mentioned at the, at the beginning, that is www.reflections-rn.org. So, Bismillah. Altıncı basamak. Sixth step. Beşer ve cin nihayetsiz şerre ve cuhuda müstahid olduklarından nihayetsiz bir temerrüd ve bir tuğyan yaparlar. İşte bunun için Kur'an-ı Hakim öyle icazkar bir belagat, belagatle ve öyle ali ve bahir üsluplarla ve öyle gali ve zahir temsiller ve mesellerle ins ve cinni isyandan ve tuğyandan zecreder ki kainatı titretir. Because the humans and the jinn have an aptitude for unlimited evil and denial, they can act with unlimited obstinacy and transgression. So, because of our you know, partial human choice that we are given, there is no limit to the evil that we can cause. There is no limit to the denial that we can be in. I can deny, God forbid, that, that um, I am the slave of God. Uh, God forbid. But then I can deny that the person that I just saw in the street is a slave of God too. Then I can deny that all the trees I see in the yard are not God's artifacts. And then I can extend this to the entire cosmos. And there are so many things, unlimited almost number of things that are constantly being brought into existence and being taken out of existence. And all the angels, all the things, all the realms, 
I can deny them all. They, again, hasha, may God forbid. So, almost unlimited, there is no limit. I can, hasha, God forbid, deny God's power, which is unlimited. Angels cannot do that. They are not given the capacity to do that. Animals do not do that. They do not have the capacity to affirm or, or, or deny. But we human beings and the jinn are given this capacity. And because of this capacity, if you do not use all of our faculties and capacities as they are meant to be used, we can act with unlimited obstinacy and transgression. So we can be in a really, really horrible place. It is because of this that the wise Quran censure, censures people and the jinn against rebelliousness and transgression with such miraculous eloquence, such exalted and encompassing style, such rich and obvious representations and examples that it causes the entire cosmos tremble. Right? Sometimes people ask, you know, there are so many verses in the Quran about hell and hellfire and the angels of hell. Uh, you know, how horrible it is, how terrible it is, how excruciating it is. Why is so much threat? What is the po point? At the end of the day, that which is being threatened is this impotent, weak, you know, human being has nothing, no real capacity, no real power, cannot bring anything into existence, cannot take anything out of existence. So limited. What is the point at the end of the day? Well, the point is, we have this unlimited capacity for obstinacy and denial. There is unlimited evil in that. And the Quran stems that, puts barriers in front of it. It censures people and the jinn against rebelliousness and transgression with mirac miraculous eloquence, exalted and encompassing style, rich and obvious representations and examples. And that, that censure causes the entire cosmos to tremble. So it is proportionate. Mesela, Ey ins ve cin, emirlerime itaat etmezseniz, haydi hududu mülkümden, elinizden gelirse çıkınız. Meseline işaret eden, Bismillah. Ya ma'aşaral cinni vel insi in istata'atum en tenfuzu min aqtaris semavati vel aradi fenfuzu la tenfuzuna illa bi sultan fe bi ayy alai rabbikuma tukazziban yursalu alaykuma shuwazum min narin ve nuhasun fela Sadakallahu'l-Azim Ayetindeki azametli inzara ve dehşetli tehdide ve şiddetli zecre dikkat et. Nasıl ins ve cinnin gayet mağrurane temerrüdlerini gayet mucizane bir belahatle kırar, aczlerini ilan eder. Saltanat-ı rububiyetin genişliği ve azameti nispetinde ne kadar aciz ve biçare olduklarını gösterir. So, for instance, pay attention to the tremendous warning, dreadful, dreadful threat, and harsh censures pointing to the example of all people and the jinn. If you do not obey my commands, then go ahead, exit the boundaries of my dominion if you can. In the verse, Astaghfirullah, 
يا معشر الجن والإنس إن استطعتم أن تنفذوا من أقطار السماوات والأرض فانفذوا لا تنفذون إلا بسلطان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يرسل عليكما شواظ من نار ونحاس فلا تنتصران صدق الله العظيم O jinn and people if you can pass beyond the regions of heaven and earth if you can penetrate through them then do so you will not pass without our authority. Which then of your Lord's blessings do you both deny? A blaze of fire and bronze will be released upon you and no one will come to your aid. If you try to you know, pass through, penetrate through, a blaze of fire and bronze will be released upon you and no one will come to your aid. And this is um, the 55th chapter of the Quran verses 33 and 36 so in the verse just we read how the quran breaks the utterly vainglorious obstinacy of people and the jinn with such incapacitating eloquence it proclaims their impotence it shows how impotent and helpless they are in comparison to the or with the vastness and tremendousness of the royal power of lordship imagine it we human beings we are stuck here on the face of the earth yes we can drill you know say a couple of kilometers miles down to extract oil etc but why, why don't you try going further where you would reach the, the magma the heat that would be melting anything and everything that you can imagine to get take there yes we can go to the moon to mars but compared to what exactly is out there that we cannot ev even fathom at this point how much is there compared to what exactly is there what is it that we have been able to achieve all we can say is subhanallah we do not know the extent of god's creation we cannot comprehend it we have talked about this several times right the known universe is about the size of the distance from one end to, to, to, to the other, the distance that light can travel in 14 billion years. It is a tremendous distance. But compared to the the um, the kursi, the footstool that is mentioned in the Quran, and we don't know exactly what it is. We don't know the quiddity of it, but we know that it is. You know, one of the creatures uh, that is there to, to manifest God's you know, tremendousness, his names and attributes. And then the throne, right, which is even further, which is the ultimate place uh, for this manifestation. Compared to the kursi, the footstool, the world is like a ring thrown into the desert. And compared to the throne, the footstool is like, you cannot compare it. So what is it? What can we do? We are stuck here. We are so small. We are so small. You know, the Pharaoh tried or asked his, uh, his men to build a tower so that he could climb there. So that he could climb and see if Hasha, God forbid, God is there. Such stupid ideas. But human beings can can come up with such stupid ideas because of their hubris and vainglory and obstinacy and so on and so forth so the verse says you think you are something try try to get beyond this see what will happen see what you will see blazing fire and and bronze 
a blaze of fire and bronze right if you were to go down the earth we would reach the the layers of magma and heat nuclear reactions if you were to go to the to the heavens right now they send a probe to the sun it's going to get as close as possible but we know that at some point it will just burn and melt right so with a verse like this the Quran breaks the utterly vainglorious obstinacy of people and the jinn with such incapacitating eloquence it proclaims their our impotence it shows how impotent and helpless they are in comparison to the vastness and tremendousness of the royal power of lordship and if if we go we can only go by his power so let's assume that one day uh, humanity invents some matter some material that can resist so much heat that we drill through earth you know travel to the center of the journey to the center of the earth right let's assume that one day we do it what does that mean all that means is that right you will not pass without god's authority you will not pass without god's royal power and if you do do you will be doing within you know within the confines of what that power lets you lets you do the comparison is our smallness tin tininess <laughs> insignificance impotency and the vastness and tremendousness of the royal power of lordship guya şu ayetle hem ve cealnaha rucuman li şeyatin ayetiyle the verse we um, read at the beginning böyle diyor ki it is as if it the quran says with this verse and the verse of and made them missiles for stoning satans right it says the following with this verse and and and both verses it is as if the quran says the following Nasıl cesaret edersiniz ki isyanınızla öyle bir sultan zişanın evamirine karşı geliyorsunuz ki yıldızlar, aylar, güneşler, emirber neferleri gibi emirlerine itaat ederler. O the jinn and people who are vainglorious and obstinate within their insignificance and drunk and stubborn within their weakness and poverty. How dare do you oppose with your rebelliousness the commands of an esteemed the king whose commands the stars, the moons, and the suns obey like obedient soldiers. The king, the sultan, God. If this is a measure, it cannot, nothing can be a measure, nothing in the creation can be a measure to his power, but for our minds to get, you know, a little bit closer to that comprehension look look he is such a king that the stars the moons and the suns obey his command like obedient soldiers hem tuyanınızla öyle bir hakimi zulcelale karşı mübareze ediyorsunuz ki öyle azametli muti askerleri var faraza şeytanlarınız dayanabilseler onları dağ gibi güllelerle recim edebilirler. Also, you are confronting with your transgression such a majestic ruler who has such obedient and tremendous soldiers that if, as an assumption, just as an assumption, if the satans had the capacity to tolerate this, those soldiers could stone them with mountain-like cannonballs. The verse is saying that, right? God would send shooting stars like missiles on Satan's. But who are you? Who are you that with your impotence, with your insignificance, you are confronting with your transgression 
And the word here that's translated is, as transgression is tuyan. Right? Tuyan is you know, anything that uh, takes you to rebelliousness against God, to denial of God, and, and being rebellious against Him. Right? So transgression is a approximate translation. With your transgression, you are confronting. Who are you confronting? You are confronting such a majestic ruler who has such obedient and tremendous soldiers that if the Satan's had the capacity to, to tolerate this, those soldiers could stone them with mountain-like cannonballs. Who are you? Hem küfranınızla öyle bir Malik-i Zülcelal'in memleketinde isyan ediyorsunuz ki, ibadından ve cünudundan öyleleri var ki, değil sizin gibi küçücük aciz mahlukları, belki farz-ı muhal olarak dağ ve arz büyüklüğünde birer aduvu kafir olsaydınız, arz ve dağ büyüklüğünde yıldızları, ateşli demirleri, şu vazlı nuhasları size atabilirler, sizi dağıtırlar. You are rebelling with your denial of blessings in the land of such a majestic owner. You are rebelling with your denial of blessings in the land of such a majestic owner who has such slaves and soldiers that not tiny and impotent creatures like you, but assuming the inconceivable, if you were disbelieving enemies as big as mountains and the earth. So if you, the tiny human being, if you were as big as mountains or as big as the earth so you think you are big imagine if you were as big as the earth as powerful as the most powerful thing that you can imagine in the in the in the creation imagine with what force how much force the earth is moving around the sun and spinning if you have ever been in an earthquake, even a small one, you feel that that tremendous, tremendous mighty, mighty power that suddenly transmits from the ground into your body and you shake and tremble and you feel it if you have ever been, right? Now that is just a, a tiny part of the earth, you know, shivering, trembling a little bit. Imagine the force, all the force that is stored in earth. So if you were as big as the earth, that owner has such slaves and soldiers that they could cast stars as big as the earth and mountains, burning pieces of iron and blazing pieces of bronze on you. And thus they would disperse you. And this is just a measure of what his slaves and soldiers could cast on you, not a measure of his power, the power that emanates. It belongs to his entity. We cannot even comprehend that. Hem öyle bir kanunu kırıyorsunuz ki, o kanunla öyleler bağlıdır. Eğer lüzum olsa arzınızı yüzünüze çarpar. Gülleler gibi küreniz misüllü yıldızları üstünüze yağdırabilirler. You are breaking such a law. So what's the law? There are two main types of law that we know. One is the law of creation. And the, law, the, and the other is the law of sharia. And both are laws that are put in place, legislated by the ultimate legislator, by God. If you don't follow the law of creation, for instance, if you put your hand in fire, you burn your hand and you can't use it anymore. If you attempted to deny the law of creation, and took a knife and pressed the sharp edge into your palm. You would be hurting yourself and cutting your hand and it would hurt. The punishment would be immediate. 
you would immediately receive the punishment and that punishment would also be an immediate deterrence now if you break the law of sharia the law that god ordained for us to follow through through his prophets and his last and best prophet prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the sharia of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you broke that law now there's a wisdom that punishment is delayed but we need to use our intellect to recognize that punishment is delayed but not cancelled not abolished it is to come look where it is going to come from you are breaking such a law by which such beings are bound that if the, if necessity arises they can slap your earth on your face and rain stars as big as your earth on you like cannonballs the bigger the more sophisticated the more powerful and serious and organized and rationalized etc the the states are around the world the more people follow the rules you go to a you know third world country you know the third world is an old concept but you know underdeveloped country a country where the level of education is low etc etc you get on a taxi you sit on the passenger seat uh, you know sometimes you reach the seat belt and you you are going to buckle up the driver says yeah, it's okay no need don't worry there is there's no fine for it or the police won't say anything i mean this has happened to me several times so it may have happened to you too you go to a country where the rule of law has is more pervasive uh, and this usually happens to be you know european countries maybe america you get in your car you sit on the uh, driver's seat in the driver's seat and the first thing you do is to buckle up so our perception of the power that executes the law determines how seriously we take it our perception of the ability of the the the state forces to see us when we do something wrong when we break the law affects how seriously we take it whether we follow it or not it also affects to what extent that law over time becomes ingrained in our character now this is just the states the human um, constructs and institutions that are built in time and if history is evidence that one day or another all are doomed to disappear and are replaced by others look at the power whose law we are even you know thinking of breaking you are breaking such a law by which such beings are bound the law of creation the stars are bound the galaxies are bound the trees are bound the earth is bound the minerals are bound the atoms are bound the subatomic particles are bound everything is bound with which such beings are bound that if necessity arises they can slap your earth on your face and rain stars as big as your earth on you like cannonballs subhanallah how can we after knowing this after recognizing this how can we ever break god's law we cannot we should not we should not be able to we should heed the verse the verse that we just uh, recited read it is telling us watch your steps you are living in the dominion of of god look around 
all these tremendous things that are inspiring oh in you he created them he owns them they are obedient to him evet Kur'an'da bazı mühim tahşidat vardır ki düşmanların kuvvetli olduğundan ileri gelmiyor belki haşmetin izharı ve düşman şema, şenaatinin teşhiri gibi sebeplerden ileri geliyor yes there are some important exhortations in the Quran that that they are not there due to the strength of the enemy. Rather, they are meant for purposes such as exposing divine sublimity and displaying the hideousness of the enemy. So at the earlier we said, you know, there are verses in the Quran that are so threatening, talking about so tremendous affairs, the the hellfire. And then you know, in the prophetic traditions too, the sirat, that we, the, the bridge that we are going to be crossing over, the um, dreadful scenes of resurrection, how people will be created depending on how they lived in this world. If they did you know, certain things, they will be resurrected blind, walking around, not being able to see. Some will be, you know, will be like, uh, their bellies will be split open. They will be carrying their intestines in their hands imagine the imagine the uh, excruciating pain and and the and the, the the pain of the vision of all these things there are some important exhortations in the quran that they are not there due to the strength of the enemy rather they are meant for purposes such as exposing divine sublimity and displaying the hideousness of the enemy don't take that as a measure of the, the strength and importance and significance of the enemy. That's what happens among human beings. You know, the, the, there are two you know, superpowers that both have nuclear weapons. One threatens the other. And the, the presentation of the, the, the, the threat, the level of threat, the level of power that is being um, displayed is a measure of how seriously they take them for instance they do war games uh, you know they shoot some missiles uh, the missiles that can cross over the ocean and get to the you know other end of the continent transcontinental missiles etc etc they explode some nuclear bombs under the ground and the tremor of that can be sensed in the other country on the you know other end of the world all of this all of this showing off is an indication of how seriously each of these countries take the other that is a potential enemy that is not what we are talking about here the enemy here is insignificant weak nothing but but the exhortation indicates divine sublimity the level the, the the station of that which is being denied and rebelled against it is because god is so great and tremendous and majestic that the threat level of threat indicates his majesty his tremendousness his sublimity and it is because of that sublimity that encroaching upon its rights becomes so so vile and lowly and hideous and therefore it displays the hideousness of the enemy too hem bazen kemali intizamı ve nihayet adli ve gayet ilmi ve kuvveti hikmeti göstermek için en büyük bir kuvvetli esbabı en küçük ve zayıf bir şeye karşı tahşid eder ve üstünde tutar, düşürtmez, tecavüz ettirmez. Mesela şu ayete bak. Furthermore, sometimes the Quran calls forth the greatest and most powerful causes against the smallest and weakest thing to show the perfection of orderliness, utmost justice, uttermost knowledge and the strength of wisdom it does not let these principles fall that smallest thing 
like the human being and sometimes the jinn there to cast aspersions on the perfection of orderliness utmost justice uttermost knowledge and the strength of wisdom all these principles that are all in effect in the creation but the quran does not let that happen it does not let those principles fall into dirt it does not allow their violation for instance look at this verse bismillah فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ رَأَى عَلَيْهِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ مَوْلَاهُ وَجِبْرِيلُ وَصَالِحُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ الظَّهِيرُ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ This is uh, Quran chapter 66 verse uh, 4 uh, I'm going to read a section that is not in the in the um, part that Ustad Nursi quotes, but I'm going to read it for the whole meaning to be understood better, inshallah. If you, the, the two wives of the Prophet wasallam, repent to God, for your hearts have deviated, all will be well. If you collaborate to back one another against him, that is the Prophet wasallam, God is his patron to back him after that. So is Gabriel, Jibreel a.s. So are all righteous believers, and so are the angels. So this is uh, about an incident that happened between uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, two of his wives. There are various narrations. The one that seems to be the strongest is that uh, the the uh, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had sent envoys to the king of Egypt, and the king of Egypt sent a noble woman. Uh, from Egypt um, as a as a gift to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so uh, so this woman uh, was a Coptic Christian and she, she she was a you know slave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he did not marry her because you know she did not become Muslim uh, but he kept her in his uh, company and had a house for her and he would visit her uh, from time to time uh, Maria was the name um, she had a honey she she, she had uh, you know some honey that the Prophet وسلم, liked and whenever she, uh, he visited her uh, she would make some uh, syrup from the honey and offer uh, to the Prophet وسلم. now some of his wives and two are uh, referred to in this verse became jealous about this and they <laughs> they agreed upon themselves to tell the Prophet وسلم, if they noticed that he was coming from Maria that he, his, he did not smell nice now this honey was from a certain uh, you know, plant and it had a peculiar smell and they said that they did not like this smell so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made an oath that he would not eat from that honey again. And according to some narrations, uh, the, the oath may have been that he would not be going to Maria again. Allahu alam. God knows uh, the, what exactly this is. Now the problem is, obviously this was not accurate. He did not smell bad. Uh, this was just a ruse that the two wives had uh, collaborated to you know put in into action against the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and of course who is the the one who is seeing this all and knows this all and communicates with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on a regular basis so this um chapter starts uh, you know, with God telling the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Oh, Prophet, you know, why are you prohibiting something that God has made permissible to you to yourself?" And then it goes on to um, to admonish the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and tells tells them, "Look, repent to God, turn back to God, uh, and if you do that." Uh, because your hearts have deviated like how how how how did you think that you would do something like this and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would not be informed about it right he is in constant communication with the one who knows all the unseen 
Uh, so repent to God. Uh, do not collaborate against the Prophet ﷺ. But if you do, know that God is his patron to back him. And also Gabriel is his patron to back him. And also all righteous believers are going to be backing him. And also all the angels. So you, you are, you know, two to infinite. You will lose. Ne kadar Nebi hakkına hürmet ve ne kadar ezvacın hukukuna merhamet var. How much respect is in this for the right that belongs to the Prophet sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem. The right that is due to the Prophet sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem. And how much mercy is in it for the rights of the wives. So the wives still have rights. And, and you know, the, the rest of the chapter also, uh, you know, regulates and tells about uh, how these relations should be arranged. Um, the Prophet's right is preserved and there is mercy that's being shown to the rights of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Radiallahu Anhuma Radiallahu Anhum all of them may, may God be pleased with all of them Şu mühim tahşidat yalnız hürmet-i nebinin azametini ve iki zayıfenin şekvalarının ehemmiyetini ve haklarının riayetini rahimane ifade etmek içindir So what is this for? You know, this, you know, this, this could be a small incident between the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his wives. Why does something like this enter into the Quran? We need to think about it, right? So it's, it could have been just forgotten in history. We could not have even uh, received any traditions about this. We did not have to know about this, this, this incident itself. And also... I should repeat, there are more than one narrations. This may not be the exact, this may not be exactly what happened. Right? But this seems to be the strongest. What is the point? The point is, this important exhortation is only to express mercifully the tremendousness of the respect that is due to the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Along with the significance of those two weak ones, the the wives of the Prophet وسلم, complaints, their complaints, and of the observance of their rights. So the Prophet has rights due to him that that should be observed. And it and it is tremendous. His rights upon all of us, upon his ummah, is tremendous. Without him, how could we know what pleases our Lord? Without him, how could we know our Lord? in the way that he deserves to be known and even then we are not able to get there but also how could we know what pleases him we would be stuck on this path into eternity and we would probably end up in hellfire may god protect us may god preserve us this important exhortation is only to express mercifully mercifully the tremendousness of the respect that is due to the Prophet وسلم, but also along with the significance of those two weak ones complaints and of the observance of their rights. Now an important one of those rights that uh, you know, I want to mention here is uh, further down in the, uh, in the chapter God tells all believers, believers guard yourselves and your families against the fire whose fuel is people and stones over which stand angels stern and strong angels who never disobey god's commands to them but do as they are ordered so believers guard yourselves and your families this is a right that our families have upon us male or female you know husband or wife father or mother man or woman it is a right that our families have upon us guard yourselves and your families and this exhortation to guard ourselves and and our families is an important reminder reminder about the the significance of that right and the exhortation that comes after that too against a fire guard against a fire whose fuel is people and stones over which stand angels stern and strong 
angels who never disobey God's commands to them but do as they are ordered subhanallah we need to be careful about these things and because we need to be careful about these things God teaches us teaches us that we need to be careful about them and how we should be careful about them so we are moving on to the seventh step inshallah melekler ve semekler gibi yıldızların dahi gayet muhtelif efradları vardır bir kısmı nihayet küçük bir kısmı gayet büyüktür hatta gökyüzünde her parlayana yıldız denilir işte bu yıldız cinsinden bir nevi de nazenin sema yüzünün murassa zinetleri ve o ağacın münevver meyveleri ve o denizin müsebbih balıkları hükmünde fatir üzül celal sani üzül cemal onları yaratmış ve meleklerine mesireler binekler menziller yapmıştır ve yıldızların küçük bir nevini de şeyatinin rejimine alet etmiş like angels and the fish and by the way the words uh, angel and fish rhyme in turkish english melek and semek uh, but they also make a lot of sense because the fish are swimming in this vast mass of water and angels fill the entire space like angels and the fish the stars have many varieties among them some are quite small and some are quite big this is so much so that everything that shines on the firmament can be called a star so do not think only the astronomical uh, you know stars these uh, celestial bodies but also anything that shines in the uh, sky we call that a, a star so we call the shooting star for instance right it is not a star it's just a comet it, it, perhaps a little piece of rock that entered the atmosphere but we call it star right so some in that sense some stars are quite small and some are quite big this is so much so that everything that shines on the firmament can be called a star so the majestic one who creates from nothing father zuljalal this is one of god's names the beautiful artful maker sani zuljamal has created one species of this genus of stars she says star is a category and within that category there is one type one species as he has created them as ornamented adornments of the delicate face of the heavens as luminous fruits of that tree if you think of the heavens all the firmament, firmament as a, a tree right it is the luminous fruits of that tree and as glorifying fish of that sea if you think of this of space as a an ocean right it is the the these stars are fish that are swimming in it glorifying god and he has made them places of spectacle mounts and homes for his angels so the angels uh, we talked about this before right angels mount on the stars and travel through uh, the space glorifying god and observing his artifacts and appreciating them and being being awed by by their beauty and majesty and perfection and so on and so forth now this is the the side of this whole picture that points to glorifying angels the beauty the perfection etc but there is this low confrontation that we talked before in the creation so there needs to be the other side and he has made a small species among the stars an instrument to stone satans now the satans of the earth want to get there and intrude and intervene in the heavenly peace of of the heavens but they are not a lot there are these shooting stars that are made instruments to stone them işte bu rejmi şeyatin için atılan şahapların üç manası olabilir so these shooting stars that are cast to stone the satans can have three meanings birincisi kanunun mübareze en geniş dairede dahi cereyan ettiğini remiz ve alamettir first it marks and is a symbolic indication that the law of confrontation is taking place even in the broadest circle İkincisi, semavatta hüşyar nöbettarlar, muti sekeneler var. Arzlı şerirlerin ihtilatından ve istimalarından hoşlanmayan cünudullah bulunduğuna ilan ve işarettir. Second, 
there are vigilant guards and obedient inhabitants in the heavens it proclaims this verse proclaims and is a sign that there are soldiers of god who do not like the intrusion and eavesdropping of the earthly evil beings and you know this is detailed in other verses in the quran and we also know from prophetic traditions that this is the case we know for instance that the the night when the prophet وسلم, was born there were so many shooting stars the jinn were chased out of away from the heavens üçüncüsü muzahrafat-ı arziyenin mümessilat-ı habiseleri olan casus şeytanları temiz ve temizlerin meskeni olan semayı telviz etmemek ve nüfusu habise hesabını tecessüs ettirmemek için edepsiz casusları korkutmak için atılan mancınıklar ve işaret ve şekleri misüllü o şeytanları evvabı sema semadan o şahaplarla red ve tarttır third it is the rejection and expelling from the gates of the heavens of those spying satans which are the vile representatives of the earth's gaudy filth gaudy filth of the earth right there are things on this earth that are so alluring so um, you know bedecked shining bright attractive but they are actually filthy the ones in the heavens see things for what they are they are not like human beings who have the the uh, the the vileness of the lower soul and deception of satan the world the soul no lower soul etc and therefore attracted to these things that are in reality filth but they are you know packaged in ways that make le- them look attractive and alluring but not the not the denizens of the the heavens it is the rejection and expelling from the gates of the heavens of those spying satans which are the vile representatives of the earth's gaudy filth with those shooting stars like catapult projectiles or signal flares shot to scare shameless spies so that the heavens which are clean and are the dwelling place of those who are clean are not contaminated and that those satans do not spy on behalf of vile souls. İşte yıldız böceği hükmünde olan kafa fenerine itimat eden ve Kur'an güneşinden gözünü yuman kozmografyacı efendi. Hence, this is the end. We went through these seven steps. We looked into the miraculous exposition in this verse that we read. And some people may you know look at it and say you know come on shooting stars are little rocks that enter into the atmosphere and they burn and therefore they cause light or there are these comets that are traveling in the space etc etc you know what does this have to do with the satans this is an an idiotic approach that needs to be called idiotic it arises from the inability of the person who is saying this to understand that reality is not limited to all that you can see there are realities that are loftier more precious more intricate more complicated more beautiful more majestic than anything that you can see touch smell taste here in this in this world with the senses that you have reality is not limited to your horse blinded vision reality is bigger and the quran being the word of the one who knows all has created all has infinite unlimited wisdom etc etc being what it is gives us information about reality with a capital r reality as reality is it does have access to those higher aspects of reality when you read a verse in the quran you don't read it to to um to judge it 
by your limited information of the world. You read it to learn about the higher realities. The reality with a capital R. You read it to learn about your Lord. You read it to learn about the, the, the, the life that is to come after this passing, fleeting, worldly life. You read it to learn about what is behind the gates of the grave for you. You read it to learn about the unseen. And you read it to understand how you should approach the seen world, how you should interpret it, how you should interact with it. What higher meanings does it carry? What you should do with it? What you should not do with it? Water, you should drink it beautifully clean to quench your thirst and you should take ablutions with it. Alcohol, wine, it is there for you to stay away from. It is there to test you, etc., etc. So this is a lesson, um, what we read, the 15th word, right? It is an interpretation of one, one verse. It uh, fends off unfair criticism that has come to this verse and other uh, verses but it also teaches us a lesson about how to approach the Quran hence all you the gentleman astronomer who relies on the firefly like flashlight of his head and closes his eyes to the Quran's Sun Look at the realities to which these seven steps point all at once. Look at them all together. Open your eyes. Leave the flashlight of your head. See the meaning of this verse in the light of miraculousness that is clear like daylight. Take a star of reality from the heavens of that verse. Cast it on the Satan in your head. Stone your own Satan. Now this is to the gentleman astronomer or the schooled gentleman who thinks that what he learned in astronomy is all that is there to be learned and was mistaken. What he now needs to do is to understand that his what he has access to through his intellect and senses is but a, a firefly that you know gives a flash of light in the darkness and then that light disappears a fleeting light like a flashlight in a vast dark space just a tiny flashlight off his head and and the sun is there but he closes his eyes to the sun, perhaps you know, turns his back. He somehow filters all that light that is coming from the sun and focuses on the flashlight of his head that is like a firefly. The sun is the Quran. Look at the realities to which these seven steps point all at once. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Leave the flashlight of your head. See the meaning of this verse in the light of miraculousness. Quran is miraculous. You need to grant its miraculousness in order to be able to start to understand its meanings. That is clear like daylight. Take a star of reality from the heavens of that verse. Oh, you the gentleman astronomer, do this. Cast it on the Satan in your head. Stone your own Satan. And now this is very important we too should stone and join in to say do not assume and this is to myself mustafa do not assume that this is all about other people it is only the astronomers or school gentlemen out there who do such things no it is an age 
it is a whole world burning burning with the fire of denial and and doubts and we are not above and beyond it we are all affected we all should take this seriously we all should cast cast a star from the heavens of that verse on our own satans on the satans in our heads we should all break our flashlights stone our own satans because reality is tremendous and it is waiting for us we all have this tremendous problem of eternal salvation are we going to are we going to succeed in eternal life or not that is the big deal so we should all cast a stone on our own satan and we should all say i'm going to read the uh, the arabic and english on here i didn't read it in the turkish because it's in arabic and i'll then read the translation right we should all say rabbi a'udhu bika min hamazati shayateen o lord i take refuge with you from the godings of satans from the alluring whispers whisperings of satans rabbi a'udhu bika min hamazati shayateen and this is from the quran chapter 23 verse 97 but it is it is also a, a a dua a supplication we we should say it often oh lord i take refuge with you from the godings of satans rabbi a'udhu bika min hamazati shayateen rabbi a'udhu bika min hamazati shayateen rabbi a'udhu bika min hamazati shayateen taking refuge in god is the the the solution to the whisperings of satan if we consciously take refuge in God, He is going to protect us. He protects us from Satan's. And we should also say, وَلِلَّهِ الْحُجَّةُ الْبَالِغَةُ وَالْحِكْمَةُ الْقَاطِعَةُ To God belongs the eloquent proof and the definitive wisdom. That should be our starting point when we approach the Qur'an. If we start from somewhere else, and there is a longer dis uh, discussion of this in the Risal Ainur, inshallah, we will read that. If we start from another point, our ability to understand what exactly is going on will be hampered, will be limited, and we will not be able to grasp it as it deserves to be grasped. To God belongs the eloquent proof and the definitive wisdom. And finally, Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana innaka anta al-alimul hakim. Glory be to you. We have no knowledge other than that which you have taught us. Indeed, you are all-knowing, all-wise. And of course, this is also from the Quran, chapter 2, verse 32. And this is also the dua that we finish our episodes with. And inshallah, we'll do that now. We came to the end of the 15th word. Uh, Ramadan is coming. It uh, looks like we will have one more Friday before Ramadan, but inshallah, we will start the uh, the treatise on Ramadan. May God give us tawfiq to read and understand that too. May God give us tawfiq. His, may God look, look at us with his enabling grace in order that we benefit from Ramadan in the way that we need to benefit from Ramadan. May we be open to its effusions, its fuel lot. May, we, may, may it become easy, may God make it easy for us to fast and may our fast have the meaning of what fasting means. Inshallah, inshallah, we will talk the, about these things uh, when we read the treaties on Ramadan. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana innaka anta al-alimul hakim wa akhirad dawahum alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. 
Al-Fatihah. Allahumma